I, from a time I was quite young, was fascinated by how people say the things that they do. And I just absorb a lot of information and apply it to myself. So um, as we all learn to speak by mimicking, when I'd watch Mary Poppins, for example, and she says, Early each day to the steps of St. Paul's. I'm going, okay, so St. Paul's, what is that? I bet it's St. Paul's, but she doesn't say St. Paul's. She says St. Paul's because she's from England, England, you know. So then learning to do it the way that she does it is more information. I would read books. A lot of the books that I was drawn to had characters that were written in different accents. And for me, that was part and parcel of being an actor and still is. So I never did it as a side thing. I would cultivate the accents that I was using to play roles. For me, it's a diving in to reality in order to understand it better and move through it. Um, there is no escape. We can save it for later, but we still have to go in there and feel all that stuff, you know? And so acting, I think when I was, when I was younger, it was more interesting to me to think about being a different person. But the more I did it, the more I just really found that, no, I'm just... I'm Mary Poppins' carpet bag. I'm finding all this in me and just pulling out new, different ways of being me that I might not necessarily choose on a given Tuesday as Amy, but, um, you know, why not? Sometimes I do. And when I'm at home, you know, anything goes, and I can be any parts of myself that I feel. So, and quite frequently outside of my own home. Once I, it, it took me a while to get um, New Zealand accent. I'd just been in Australia, and um, so that was like three days. But um, then I moved to New Zealand, and a couple of weeks went by, and I could do, like, I could sort of do it, but I couldn't, like, there was something that I wasn't really getting. And so I had to look at um, what in me is resisting learning this accent, you know? And I think for me, I tend to be a very out there, straightforward, sharesy kind of person. And I think I found that accent to be a bit more reserved. And like, you don't just go in um, and order a coffee, you know? You don't just go up and say, yeah, I'd like a, yeah, I want a triple ground, a half calf, non fat latte. You go in and you say, oh, hi, how are you? Oh, God, how are you? Oh, God, thanks. Um, would you like to order something? Oh, yes, yes, that's great. Um, I'd like a coffee. Oh, okay, what kind of coffee would you like? Oh, okay, this and I'd like that. Oh, sweet, okay. And you have this exchange and it's, it's, it's lovely and it's very polite, but I think I found something um, held back about it that I needed to just look at and go, well, that's, that's sweet, you know, that's a different way to be. Let's dig into that and try that on. For me, it's essential. That's half of the person's expression. They're expressing, expressing visually, they're expressing auditorily, um, whether they're speaking a language or just sound. And there's a, it's, we're all vibration. We're all energy. So, you know, the energy, the vibration of an Australian accent, or um, you know, the energy, the vibration of like a New York kind of a thing. It's very particular. And if I'm going to play a character um, from that place but not get that particular energy, I'm going to see if I can do that. If I'm going to play a person from that particular place but not get that energy, um, I'm not going to be as effective because there's a softness in my voice right now that's definitely harder if I have a different accent. Um, and for period pieces, we've probably all seen those period pieces where you just don't believe that the person is from that time period. And for me, it takes me right out, right out. So, but it's fun. It's, it's a, well, it's fun for me. I, I find some, a reason to be fascinated by it. Um, I would say it's not essential for every actor because some actors aren't interested in playing period pieces. But if you are, yeah, do it. Because, you know, there are ways that they talked in 1940 that don't exist now. 
and there are ways that we talk now that didn't exist then. So if I'm gonna, you know, like do this and try and be in the 1940s, um, I'm not gonna believe you. Thank you for watching A Wise Way. Subscribe to stay updated, share to pass the knowledge, or view our other videos on the left.